Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We are Tom and Melissa, and we're really happy to have you here with us today. If you are brand new to our channel, we really would appreciate if you'd go right below this video and click that subscribe button so that you can join our channel and always have a seat at our table. Today, we are going to make a snack because Melissa and I are getting ready to take a road trip. And anytime you take a road trip, you need something to snack on. So we're making Chex Mix. Now, Chex Mix is also good for game time, and it is football season. It's good to have for kids when they're a little bit hungry and you're waiting to get dinner on the table. Really, it's good for any time, movie watching or anything else you're doing. It's always a good time for Chex Mix. So let's talk about what we're using today to make Chex Mix. First, we're going to start with two sticks of butter and we're going to melt that in the microwave. So I'm going to go ahead and start that before we talk about what else we're using, just because we need to get that started melting. So all I'm going to do is put it in a microwave safe measuring cup. And I will stick that in our microwave and we will let that start melting. I'm gonna start it probably on 45 seconds and see how it does. And then we'll add some time if we need to. All right, now let's talk about what else we're using. Let's talk about our dry ingredients. I like to call them the crunchies. We're going to start with eight cups of Crispex cereal. Now, the reason I use Crispex instead of the uh, rice checks and corn checks is because Crispex has corn on one side and rice on the other. So you only need one cereal. You don't have to buy two boxes. So I like to use Crispex. We're using eight cups of that. Then we're going to use two cups of Kix cereal. Now, I'll be honest and tell you, we have never used Kix cereal in a Chex Mix recipe before. That's really close, but it needs just a few more seconds. But my wife recently went on a scrapbook weekend with some friends, and one of those friends brought some Chex Mix, and it had Kix cereal in it. So when Melissa got home, she said, when you make the Chex Mix for our road trip, I really would like for you to put some kicks in it because I liked it in what Tracy made. So we're adding kicks today. Then we're going to add two cups of twisted pretzel sticks. And these, these are seasoned. These are seasoned, but you can use anything. Well, that, that just makes a really good point. You can use anything in Chex Mix. You don't have to make it the way I make it. You don't have to make it the way anyone else makes it. You make it your own. These are things we like. So you decide what you like. Go to the store and look up and down the snack aisle and the, the cracker aisle and the chip aisle and you decide what you like and put in it. But we're using two cups of twisted pretzel sticks. We're also using two cups of cashews. I know that most people use peanuts. But I don't like peanuts. So instead, <laughs> I use cashews. Then we're going to use a seven ounce bag of bagel chips. And these are a little bit big. If you don't like them that big to munch on, just break them in half or break them in quarters. We're going to use a seven and a half ounce bag of bugles. And I'm gonna tell you, somebody in this house loves bugles. I like them too, but she likes them a lot more than I do. And then we're going to use a bag of oyster crackers. These are good for any kind of a snack mix that you're making. And our last crunchy is going to be a bag of Cheez-Its. And I got the thin snapped Cheez-Its. I just really like those. I like them better than the regular Cheez-Its. Let's check our butter. Oh, perfect. So, those are our crunchies. Now, to that, we are going to, to the butter, we are going to add three tablespoons 
of Worcestershire sauce. And if I didn't say that the way you say it, it's okay. <laughs> we, we don't all have to say it the same way. But three tablespoons. Then we're going to do two teaspoons of garlic powder. We're going to do one and a half teaspoons of Lowry season salt. And I know what some of you are gonna say, well, the Worcestershire sauce already has salt in it. Yes, it does, but this is a little different flavor. So we're going to do some seasoned salt. Then we're going to do one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of paprika, and we're going to start with one teaspoon of hot sauce. We're using Pepper Palace heat today, but I don't know why I looked up there, I've already taken that out. But you can use any hot sauce you like. Whatever your favorite hot sauce is, use that. Okay, so let's mix up. Oh, by the way, we have preheated the oven to 250 degrees. Notice I said 250 degrees. You want a really low oven, and we're going to bake this for about an hour. We'll start every 15 minutes, but we'll bake it for an hour. All right, so we have our Worcestershire sauce. Let's put in our two teaspoons of garlic powder. There's one, and there's two. And you can adjust any of these seasonings any way you want to. You do not have to do the amounts I do if you want less of something. Put less. If you want more, put more. It's your snack mix. So you put in as much or as little as you want. Okay, so that's a teaspoon and a half. And then one teaspoon of everything else. One teaspoon of onion powder. One teaspoon of paprika. And after I get this stirred up and taste it, I might add a little more paprika, but we'll see. I love paprika. Okay, there's one teaspoon. And one teaspoon of hot sauce. Melissa and I are not big heat people. We, and we need to add that we are also going to be making this in Shango with a lot of people. Yes, we are. So, Actually, I'm gonna go a little light on this, just since we are sharing it with other people. I know that some of them are definitely not heat people. So. Right. So I went a little light on that. All right. People let's... might be thinking we were going to be eating a lot of chicken. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. No, this is not just for us. We are going to take it on a road trip, and we have friends going with us. So I'm going to bag it up, and each car will get a bag of Chex Mix. Okay, so we're going to set that to the side for a minute and start mixing our crunchies. So let's start with our Crispex. Remember, we're doing eight cups. I'm always concerned that I'm gonna rip the bag wide open, and then I won't be able to seal it up. All right, here's my eight cup measure. And you don't have to be precise. If it's a little over, that's not gonna hurt anything. All right, there's eight cups. Then kicks, and I'll tell you, I've already opened it because I wanted to taste it after Melissa told me about having it with the... Um, I didn't even know what it was when Tracy got hers out. What are these little round things? It's been a long time since I've had kicks, but... So we're doing two cups of kicks, okay? We might need a little extra. You can throw in what you want, guys. All right, so we have those two in. Now we're going to do our twisted pretzels. I think this is a two-cup measure, yep. Let's just, there we go. 
Okay, that might have been a little more than two cups, but doesn't hurt anything. And then two cups of cashews. Those are my favorite nuts. Okay, in those go. And then everything else just gets dumped in. So we'll take our bagel chips. I don't think so. If I do, I'll grab them. Now, a few minutes ago, I talked to you about breaking these. If you feel like those are too big for you to have for a snack, you can always break them in half. Trust me, some of them are already gonna be broken up. They won't all be whole chips. So you do them the way you want to. And then a bag of bugles, and I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm not gonna put the whole bag because I'm gonna save Mama just a few. There's a few in the bottom of the bag, Mama. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. And a bag of oyster crackers. In they go. And our cheeses. You didn't see that. Well, I got the scissors out. I know. Silly. It's not good for my teeth, is it? No, it's not. I just went to the dentist this morning. Okay. Now, we're going to take a... Actually, I'm going to use one of these things. It'll be better on metal. And we're just going to stir this up a little bit. Just go under and fold it over. Just so all of your butter and seasoning doesn't end up in the same place and you don't want it all to end up on your cheeses. This is so, a savory version of Texas. Yes, this is not a sweet version. And trust me, there are tons of sweet versions out there. Now, if we get this on here and it really soaks it up and we feel like it's not enough, I can always make more. You can always melt another stick of butter. Okay. Let's drizzle some of this on here and start stirring. I won't put it all on at first. I just want to make sure. And I'll tell you, the secret of this is stirring and stirring and stirring and stirring. The more you stir, the better it's going to be coated. The more you stir, the more evenly it'll be distributed among all the different ingredients. If you just pour it on and stir a time or two, you're going to have a lot of dry ingredients. Okay, let's put the rest on. Just drizzle it slowly. Put it all over. Yum, yum, yum. Look at all that deliciousness. Okay, and now we're just going to stir. Now, I'm going, no joke, I'm going to stir this for probably three or four minutes. And I know you don't want to stay here and watch me stir this, but I'm going to stir until I feel like everything is well coated. And after three or four minutes, if it's not coated well enough for me, I'll make some more sauce and put on it. But I'll let you know if I do that. So we'll be back in just a few minutes after I get this stirred up really well. Okay, I've stirred for several minutes and I just feel like it's not quite coated enough. So I am doing another batch. I'm only doing half though. So I did one stick of butter, one and a half tablespoons of Worcestershire. What do I need, Melissa? Um, I need, it was one and a half teaspoons of seasoned salt. So, so I need about three fourths of a teaspoon. Okay, that wasn't quite three fourths, okay. It was two teaspoons of garlic, so now you just need an additional one. Uh-oh. I think I got those backward. So seasoned salt should have been first. Sorry about that. And I need one seasoned salt. Didn't quite this, have it, okay? The seat, well, seasoned salt would have been three-fourths, so. So a half of a teaspoon of onion powder? No, yeah, one teaspoon of, of wait, onion powder would be a half, I'm sorry. Got it. And then half paprika and half of hot sauce. Right. We will put 
the recipe in the description box the way we have finally made it. Not the way we did it the first time, but the total recipe. And you know what? I tasted it. It's not that hot. So I'm going to go ahead and put half a teaspoon in again. Okay. Stir that up. Okay, let's get all this out of the way. Drizzle this on. You just never know how much it's gonna soak up. And you know, I've added a couple of things this time that we don't normally add, just like the kicks. I don't remember if we've ever put oyster crackers in it before. Do you remember? Oh my gosh, it's been a while since we've made this. But... I know. I don't think we have. I think that's something that I found at the store and thought, hey, that would be good in there. All that throws it off a little bit. Throws it off a little. That's why I said you have to make it your own. Don't stick to somebody else's recipe. Make it the way you like it. Now, once we have this completely mixed up and everything appears to be coated, we are going to put it in. We're going to put it on uh, baking sheets, cookie sheets, and put it in the oven. 250 for one hour and stir it every 15 minutes. So let's get that done. Now you can see that we have wadded up our parchment paper. If you do that, it will lay flat in your cookie sheet better. Okay, let's see how that is. And, you know, I know people that say, oh, it has to be in a single layer. Nothing can be on top of each other. Well, I've never worried about that. Because you're going to stir it every 15 minutes. It's all going to be at the bottom. It's all going to be at the top some. So it's okay. Just put it on there. And, you know, I think this is a really pretty Chex Mix. I love the colors in it. Okay, there's one of our pans. Here comes the other one. Make sure we get them divided fairly evenly. I could eat. I think I am going to. Mm. Oh, there's bugles. Yum. Okay, and I'm gonna put the rest of it over here. Get it all out. Okay. Just spread it out and we're gonna start baking it. Now, I'm not going to come back every time we stir it, every 15 minutes. But when we're finished, when it's completely done after an hour, we will come back and let you see the Chex Mix. So we'll be back as soon as this is ready. Our Chex Mix has been baking at 250 degrees for about 45 minutes. I have stirred it twice already. This will be the third stirring. And then we'll put it back in for one final 15 minute baking. So, let's take it out. I can hear it sizzling. And I will show you that I just go under it kind of go under and turn it over. And yeah, you're gonna lose a piece or two because it's full. I just go under and turn it over and push it back. And I can already tell you that this is pretty much dry. There's not much wet left on it. I can already tell that. It smells really good. It does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I can't wait for it to cool. I'm just tell you, I'm not going to be able to wait for the road trip. So those of you who have been with us for a while may remember that this time last year, Melissa and I posted some videos from Florida. And that's because we go down and play at being snowbirds. We really enjoy our time in Florida in the winter. 
It's sure a lot better than the cold Kentucky gray, dreary, snowy days. I'll tell you that. All right, so this is going back in. I will do the other pan the same way, and then I'll set my timer for 15 minutes. And just by looking at this, I can tell you that it's pretty much dry, so 15 more minutes will be plenty. If you get to the end of one hour and you can still see that yours is a little wet, then put it back in for another 10 or 15 minutes until you can tell it has dried up. You don't want it wet because it'll become soggy. You want it to dry up. All right, so I'm going back in. We'll get the other pan out and do the same. And when it's cooled off a little bit, we will come back and taste it for you. Our Chex Mix has completely cooled. It's been probably an hour or a little better. And it is ready for us to bag up and get ready to take on a road trip. So let's do a little taste test. I'll just tell you, these little bagel bites are probably my favorites. Mmm. I like these too. And the bugles. <laughs> I like it all. That is really good. It's not overpowering. You don't put it in your mouth and go, whoo, garlic or onion or Worcestershire sauce. It's just, it's a nice blend. It's very nice. Got a great flavor. All right. Thank you so much for watching our video. Let me remind you, I know this makes a huge batch and a lot of you don't need this much. You can easily cut this recipe in half or in one fourth and fix the amount you need. So feel free to do that. Don't, don't feel like you have to make a full batch to enjoy some of this Chex Mix. Also, Melissa and I were talking about that someone's bound to ask where I got this tub that I use to mix up my Chex Mix and things in. I got it from a local hardware store. I did not order it. I didn't buy it online. I just got it at a local hardware store. So if you have a hardware store run in, they probably have these. There's a funny story that goes with it. I, when The day that I bought this, the man who was working at the cash register was an older gentleman. And he said, what are you washing today? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not buying it to wash anything. I'm buying it to mix up bread dough and chicks mix. And I told him a few things I would use it for. And he said, well, you know, that's a wash tub. Yes, it's a wash tub. All right. Thank you so much for watching our video. We appreciate it. Please go right below this video and give us a thumbs up. That just says you like the video. Again, if you haven't already subscribed, we sure would appreciate you going right below the video and clicking that subscribe button. Remember that right below this video, there's a description box and you'll see the title of this Chex Mix in that box. If you'll click that title or anywhere in that box, that box will expand. Melissa always puts the written recipe there for you and our contact information is under the recipe. Also, Melissa and I would love to hear your comments about your favorite snack food. Maybe it's something that you always fix to take on a road trip, like we're taking this on a road trip. Or maybe it's your favorite game day food. Whatever your favorite snack is, let us know. We'd like to hear from you about what you like the most. All right, we sure do appreciate you watching. Please remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.